Hey Ash, all things industry, and I'm going to talk today about one of the most frustrating things I've had practicing endo, and it's how to take a working length x-ray. Whether it's working length or with gutta percha, you know, it's just one of the most frustrating things possible. So, I'm going to use my buddy Dexter here. I got him ordered in, and we're going to use a couple tools, and one of them is using this unique tool. So it's going to be for digital sensors, but you can use it for uh, the CCD plates as well and regular old school x-rays. So this is a great little paralleling device uh, that has a unique little groove on top to allow for taking an x-ray with endophiles as well as our good old snap array or the good old crocodile teeth. This is not crocodile teeth anymore, they're like dentures. Uh, and how to kind of place it easily into the into the patient and get a, an x-ray the first time. Okay, so we got Dexter all suited up. We're doing our, our doing our root canal and we need to take a working length. And let's just practice with this guy here. So this is tooth number four six and this is a great device to be able to grab a working length during the procedure. So this, they make these for, um, I have uh, another video will be set up for CCD plates as well, but this is the direct sensor. So um, I find it's much more efficient. You can use a radiolucent rubber dam frame or a metal one. I find it more efficient with this one to take uh, my frame off. So, you know, one of the problems you have when you take your rubber dam off is it becomes this goobly mess when you're go to put it back on. And of course, it's easier on Dexter. So what I do all the time is when I take my rubber dam frame off, I tear a corner off so I know that every time I go to put the rubber dam frame on, that that corner, that side of the rubber dam is to, the, is to my right. Just a little trick, that makes it so much more efficient. Okay, so we're gonna come in, we can see that we got the patient biting, we, we placed this in there, and now you can see the rubber dam clamp is, in, is right in the middle of these the two slots there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get Dexter to bite down, please. And we're gonna slide that up with one hand. And then, so we've got that set up, we're taking our working length shot, and then this is how we line the tube up straight, just like a regular paralleling device, pretty simple. Line it up kind of like that. There we go. You can fiddle around with that, and that's, that's how we get a straight on shot. But what if your files are overlapped? Well, what you can do is you can angle it and come down kind of like that at an angle. And let's see where the angle is. I'm gonna come up a little bit. I don't wanna foreshorten it too much. And this way we kinda of get a better feeling for, and it's a lot of practice, trust me. Lots and lots of practice. So there we go, so we've got that angle. So that would, that would allow us to see the mesial, potentially see the mesial root to see if our files, one shorter than the other, using the slob rule. And then, so that would be a distal shot, and then if we're going to take a mesial shot, we just come underneath like that. It's a little more complicated because of this, the metal piece here. And then we come like that, so that's, remember, this is with our files. And you can do this with a paralleling device. It's much more complicated when you're starting out because the patient will push down those files and your working length's all monkey. Um, and then we'll get something like that. So that's, that would be our mesial shift shot. And again, we talk about our, we use our slob rule to figure out which file is what. So here we are, and I just want to take a break to show, talk just quickly about the usefulness of a shift shot, especially when you're taking um, working lengths uh, or with files or your gutta percha fit, if you're using gutta percha uh, versus gutta core or whatnot, thermophil. So this these shots on the bottom are preliminary, so preoperative, and we have our straight on of tooth number 36, and then we have a mesial shift of the 2.6, sorry, 3.6 mandibular first molar, so that gives us an outline of the, you can see the PDL uh, and the root, it gives us a little better, better feel for kind of the anatomy. And during the procedure, I take a working length with my gutter percha. So you can see I have my rubber dam on here, I use that for, it's another record of litigation to you know that I use a rubber dam. As well, um, now I can tell which if my canals are confluent or if one of my gutter purchase pieces of gutter purchase points are short. And in this, so if it's a straight on radiograph, like the final post fill, you can't tell if the, where the canals are. It's hard to figure out. I mean, it's almost impossible to figure out which mesial canal is what. But on this one, because this was a distal shift shot, 
I know that, and there'll be another video talking about the slob rule, we know that same side lingual, so if this is my distal shot, I know that this would be my lingual canal, opposite side buccal canal, this would be my buccal. So these two canals are confluent, so this gives me an idea of um, if they weren't confluent, which knowing the slob rule, same side lingual, opposite side buccal, which canal would be short. Oh, just before we're done with this, what I do need to add is to weasel this, to finagle this sensor into here, it's a little bit of, a little bit of gymnastics here. So we're going to pretend that we're doing the mandibular lower right quadrant. So it's going to be, the sensor is going to be going in like this. So this is towards the back of the patient's throat and then the sensor needs to come in like this. So you have to weasel the sensor in through the little hole and then flip it such that you can get it snapped in. You can see that there. We snap that into place and it's pretty easy once you get practice with it. So this is a great tool if you're starting off doing endo, you're in school or you're just doing proper practice or you're whatever you may be. Uh, it's really efficient but if you don't have one of these I'm sure you got one of these friends, whether it's a snap array, the crocodile teeth, or the denture teeth. And these can be a great tool, uh, and I even set it up wrong. So the way we set it up is this goes towards the cheek, and you actually use that with the x-ray tube to kind of see, let me pull that in here, to see kind of where you are underneath the rubber dam frame. So to set that up for a mandibular right posterior tooth, we're gonna set it up so the cable kind of goes out kind of with the handle. So that's a, a good way to, rem to remember it, out with the handle. And have it so actually the sensor plate is facing towards the x-ray tube. But the important point is this, or if you've got a large kind of biting plate, it goes towards the cheek so you can actually set up your rubber dam, uh, the x-ray tube. So let's take a look. So again, um, what I do is I make a, I'll take the rubber dam, you can use this with the rubber dam frame on, rubber dam frame off, I, it's faster for me to take it off, and then I tear a little notch, so when we get all messy with our saliva and stuff, and I'm trying to unstick this, and I'm not wasting time trying to figure out where my rubber dam goes, I know that this little n groove always goes to my right, and you can do this with a rubber dam punch too, start before you start. So this is... Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull this off to the side, we're going to slide this in, we'll get Dexter to open really big, and we're going to slide this in, and you see how that little groove makes it helpful for me to see when I bring my tube, tube head up. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to line up my x-ray tube with the corner of the rin, and then come at just a bit of an angle, I can't tell you what the bisecting rules are and whatnot, so we'll come around. See like this, that's what it looks like there. We're coming at an angle and you should be able to get your shot. Now, if you have overlapping files, for example, like this in your mesial, mesial root and you wanna get a shift shot so you can see which one's shorter, we're gonna angle this back like this, get a little bit of an angle, let's come like this. So we are getting a bit of an angle and this definitely takes practice to get that right angle. So we're gonna come in like this and then if you want a mesial shot, we can come in kind of like this with a good good old angle and angle it. We're going to come up at an angle from the down. Let's see if we can get that like that. And that's how we get a mesial, mesial shift shot using the slob rule to try to figure out what's what, which, ang which file is what. So thanks for joining me. Hopefully that helped. Please place your questions or your comments in the remarks below. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll be posting every Friday. And I really, you know, I really appreciate hearing from you guys. It's, uh, it's nice to, com to connect with uh, other clinicians and other people about uh, all things dentistry. Cheers.